Well, by the time Americans go to cast their ballots on November 8th, the 2016 election cycle will have been in full swing for nearly 600 days. I know, I want to kill myself. Right, God. Now, singer and activist Sheryl Crow is calling for shorter presidential campaign seasons. Moving forward, writing in a petition online, we cannot sustain another lengthy slugfest like what we've witnessed for the past two years and ask both the DNC and the RNC to reform the process and shorten our election season. Joining me now, Cheryl Crow. Cheryl, great to see you. Nice to see you. I think so many people are having that same feeling. It's just, it's too much. It's overload, no? I mentioned it, I believe I mentioned it on The View, and suddenly I was just hit from all angles. Are you really going to do a petition? Where can I sign it? And how, how can we make that happen? Um, what, shorten the process? Mm -hmm. um, well, I think that we're going to have to really be thoughtful about it. Obviously, we have to defend our freedom of speech, which is clearly something I care about because that's how I make my living. Um, but all I know is if this was an issue on the ballot, I'm sure unanimously people would vote mm -hmm. to not have to go through this again and to think about starting November 9th, anyone can throw their name in the hat and start the whole thing all over again. First, we'll have to get through the impeachment process, whoever wins. We have to get through the impeachment <laughs> process. That's tricky. I'm going to have a petition for that. Yeah. Actually. I mean, realistically, it would be very hard. But what you're speaking to is a larger malaise that I think a lot of voters are feeling, that this is never-ending and that it's so vitriolic and it's so divisive. Mm -hmm. And now it goes on for so long. It's a massive downer. Here's the thing. Two years of a campaign does not... Uh, educate anyone any more than it would have if it had been six months. The argument that all these things that have been coming out in the last couple of months, they would still come out in the last couple of months. That's when all the bombshells come out is generally right before the election. And instead, it's really not benefited anyone. It's not been any more enlightening. It's kind of just benefited the media outlets mm -hmm. and political consultants and people who work on elections and super PACs and lobbyists and we have to get away from that we've got to change the dialogue and we need to do it for the future of the country and for our kids now you are a Democrat but you came from a, a mixed household I right did, your mom yes. was Democrat your dad was Repo staunch yes. Republican yeah so how did your mom win and and did it lead to trouble with your, you and your dad uh, I mean truth be told my mom and probably most women wear the pants in the family right they <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm uh oh uh oh uh, abort, abort. No, it's, um, it was funny because when I was 18, um, Ronald Reagan was, was, uh, was up against the incumbent and they were going to cancel, cancel out each other's votes. Mm -hmm. So secretly they went to each of us kids and were campaigning. But the nice thing about it was you didn't have all um, of the social media and the just bombardment of vitriolic mm -hmm. dialogue that went on. You had Walter Cronkite, you had the debates, you had the newspapers. Yeah, and then you voted. And then you I, voted. I remember seeing you at a, in Vesco Field uh, back when Barack Obama mm -hmm. accepted the nomination and the pillars and, the, and you played and your music was beautiful. How do you feel he fared? Because you know, even he has admitted that the promise that I think many people felt that day, mm -hmm. that there wasn't going to be so much blue and red and vitriol and partisanship, Well, even he's admitted it, it was not it's possible. Gonna, it's, you know, I think that this petition is going to address one small thing. There's so many things that need to be addressed in our government from term limits to also the fact that our government's been in a stalemate for whatever reason. Um, and we can't have that. I think our public figures sometimes forget that they're representing mm -hmm. a massive constituency and that the people that are putting money in their pockets, the lobbyists, the special interest, uh, they're, they're getting to make the decisions. And uh, that can't be solved with a petition, but this can. Got to go. Cheryl Crow is voting for Hillary Clinton. <laughs> we'll find out during the break whether she really means it. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>